Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to discuss the topic on amplifier. For this video, I'm going to explain how a Class C amplifier, basically Class C amplifier, has the best efficient. However, it has the poorest linearity. This video, I'm going to describe how a Class C amplifier actually works. This will be the part 7 series discussion on amplifier. So if you're keen to know more about amplifier, for example, I have done class A and also class B and also class AB. Now I'm doing class C. So if you're keen, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on amplifier. This is my email. If you have any question, Regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much. Before we touch on how this Class C amplifier actually works. Let's discuss on the bias on Class C amplifier. Okay, the base of the transistor is connected to ground through a resistor RB. Okay, you can see that this is basically the base of the transistor. It actually connected to the ground through a resistor RB. There is no external bias voltage applied. You can see that this VCC is not joined to the base. So hence, there is no external bias voltage that is actually applied. An RF signal to be amplified is applied directly to the base. Okay, So this is basically the RF input RF signal to be more precise. It actually fit directly to the base of the transistor. The transistor will conduct on during the positive half cycle of the input wave and will be cut off on the negative half cycle. So what happened here is basically, as you can see that this is a positive half cycle, okay, the transistor will turn on, while at the negative half cycle, the transistor will turn off. You probably will think that this actually seems to be aligned with the class B amplifier, which I have discussed earlier on. However, this is not the case. Okay, so if you recall, how does a class B amplifier actually work is the emitter base junction of a bipolar transistor has a forward voltage of 0 0.7 volt. As I mentioned during the class B amplifier, okay, the base and also the emitter, okay, they can imagine that there is some form of diode okay, which require a forward voltage of 0 0.7 volt in order to turn on. In another word, the emitter base junction will not conduct until the base is more positive than the emitter by 0 0.7 volt. In short over here, so this need to be 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so basically at the emitter is basically to the ground. So basically you can see that this is actually zero. And the minimum okay, to turn on this transistor is I need to have a 0 0.7 volt at the base. So with this, okay, you can assume that the transistor will turn on. So this is what you want to illustrate over here. Okay, when the input signal is applied, the collector current will not flow until the base is positive by 0 0.7 volt, which has the same case of class B amplifier. So in short over here, the collector current will not flow. Okay, so if the emit if the base, sorry, if the base is less than 0 0.7 volt, okay, the collector current will not flow. If the base is more than 0 0.7 volt, then the collector current will flow. Okay, so this is what it illustrates here. So so this is basically almost the same as class B amplifier. A simple way of supply bias bias is with the RBC1 network. Okay, so this is the RBC1 network. Okay, so what they do is basically they supply bias to the transistor. Let's understand a little bit more. Here, 
the signal to be amplified is applied through capacitor C1. Okay, this is what is the same. This is the input signal is actually applied through this capacitor C1. Okay, when the emitter base junction conducts on a positive half cycle C1, okay, they will charge to the peak of the applied voltage less than the forward drop across the emitter base junction. Okay, so basically during the positive half cycle, this part here, for example, will charge up the capacitor C1. However, the amount to be charged up will be less than the base and the emitter voltage, which typically is 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so basically this is what you want to illustrate over here. On the negative half cycle of the input, the emitter base junction will be reverse biased. Hence, the transistor does not conduct during these periods of time and capacitor C1 will discharge through RP. Okay, so what happened here is basically this transistor will not turn on during the negative half cycle. So therefore, the charges that you store earlier on during the positive half cycle to the capacitor C1, now they will take this opportunity to discharge to the resistor RP. Okay, so as illustrated over here. Okay, this produces a negative voltage across RB. Okay, which means that this actually create a negative voltage at the RB. Okay, which means that over here is plus, this is minus. They actually create some negative voltage drop across this RB. Okay, so therefore, when they actually serve as a reverse bias on the transistor. Therefore, if we can properly design Okay, in terms of the time constant, okay, by adjusting the value of RP and C1, okay, an average DC reverse bias voltage will be established, which means that if we can control the value of R, RB and C1, okay, we can actually control basically the bias voltage okay, that is fall under the resistor RP. Okay, the applied voltage will cause the transistor to conduct only on the pits during the peak okay, the applied voltage then will be conduct the higher the average dc bias okay, which means that the higher this dc bias okay, voltage the narrow the conduction angle okay, which means that they are actually thinner as illustrated over here at the output here okay the higher the average dc bias the narrow the conduction angle and the shorter the duration of the collector current pulse Okay, which means that if this thing increase, okay, which is more negative bias, okay, so therefore at the output, okay, they will be much more narrower, which I have also illustrated on the class B amplifier. Okay, so this method is actually referred as signal bias. So in short, okay, the bias resistor RB will pull the base terminal of the transistor further downward. Okay, you can see that the Q point for class B amplifier is right at the meter. But as for class C, okay, because of the negative bias at the resistor RB here, they actually drop, okay, drop all the way as much as possible, actually just below the cutoff point. Okay, so basically the Q point will be fixed to just below the cutoff point in the DC load line. As a result, the transistor will start to conduct only after the input signal amplitude has increased above VPE and also the bias voltage by RB, which I have described earlier on. Okay, so therefore, this is the reason why the main portion of the input signal is not present in the output signal. Okay, so the more okay, the voltage that falls under this RB here, okay, you can imagine that this will be more narrow. Okay, so in short, this is what you want to mention about this class C amplifier in terms of bias. So next, let's move on to this tune circuit, which is typically a LC, okay, parallel LC. Class C amplifier has some form of tune circuit connected in the collector. You can see that this tune circuit is actually connected to the collector of the transistor. The purpose of this tune circuit is to have AC sine wave output. Okay, so is to have AC sine wave output. Okay, the L and C form the resonance circuit and the value are selected so that the resonance circuit 
oscillate in the frequency of the input signal and antenna or other frequency. A parallel tune circuit will ring or oscillate at its resonant frequency whenever it receives a DC pulse. Okay, whenever they receive a DC pulse, okay, which means that the current will be able to flow. Okay, basically they actually will create a resonant frequency. Okay, the pulse will charge the capacitor. The, the pulse will charge the capacitor and then they will actually discharge into the inductor okay, on the resonance circuit okay, here. The magnetic field in the inductor will increase and after that they will be collapsed, causing a voltage to be induced. Voltage then recharge the capacitor in opposite direction. Okay, this exchange of energy between the inductor and capacitor is called the flywheel effect and produce a damp sine wave at the resonant frequency. Okay, so with this here, okay, we can understand that if therefore the resonant circuit receives a pulse of current every half cycle, okay, every positive half cycle, okay, the voltage across the tune circuit will be a constant amplitude sine wave at the resonant frequency. Okay, so therefore, even though the current flow through the transistor in short pulse, the class C amplifier output will be a continuous sine wave okay, because as created by this LC resonance circuit. Okay, so therefore with this, okay, I hope you can consider to like this video and also consider to subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you.